In a typical eukaryotic cell, telomeres protect the ends of DNA-containing chromosomes from deterioration. They're similar to the aglets that prevent shoelaces from unraveling. There are a lot of factors that affect this, but the basic concept is that telomere ends become shorter after each time the cell divides. In 1961, American anatomist Leonard Hayflick demonstrated that normal human fetal cells grown in a culture will divide approximately 50 times before becoming senescent. Senescence comes from the Latin word senex, which means old. The cellular senescence theory of aging states that organisms age because they accumulate senescent cells over time. These are cells that have stopped dividing due to telomere damage. So we've established that all multicellular organisms grow old, which almost always leads to death. However, there is a state known as biological immortality in which the rate of the mortality from senescence is stable or even decreasing. That's not to say they can't die. Organisms that are biologically immortal are still subject to injury and disease. Turtopsis dornii, or the immortal jellyfish, can be found in the Mediterranean Sea and near Japan. It's part of the class Hydrozoa, a group of tiny predatory animals that are often found in huge colonies. Immortal jellyfish start out as fertilized eggs that develop into free-swimming larvae called planula. The planula swims until it finds a suitable place to settle, then metamorphoses into a fixed colony of genetically identical polyps. Through a process called strobilation, free-swimming jellyfish called medusae bud off of these polyps and grow to sexual maturity. These bell-shaped creatures are only 4.5 millimeters tall and wide. After this point, if the jellyfish is exposed to physical danger, environmental stress, disease, or simply old age, it can revert to its polyp stage and become a new colony through transdifferentiation, a process through which mature cells can become other types of mature cells. This cycle could theoretically be repeated forever, but it has only been observed in a laboratory so far because it's extremely difficult to observe such a rapid process in a natural setting. In addition, only one scientist has managed to keep T. dornii in captivity for a long period of time. Shin Kubota from Kyoto University has contributed much of her knowledge about these miraculous creatures. Scientists have a lot to gain from studying the transdifferentiation of this species because it could revolutionize using stem cells to treat dead or damaged tissue in humans. However, we haven't managed to figure out how to make humans immortal just yet. If you're looking to defy death, stick to skydiving for now. Thanks to the American Museum of Natural History and the World Register of Marine Species for fantastic information. This is Jessica Zong. Thank you for watching.